Hey, it is not Arthur Idala. It is not Frank or Al. It is Steve Adubato. And I, I, I got to tell you, a sitting ovation That's from right. Frank and Al. And uh, as I am standing here in the beautiful studios of AM 970, the answer is my honor, my pleasure to be here on August the 3rd. 2016, the presidential race is heating up. Bill Bratton, while he loves New York, New York, New York, New York, he is uh, leaving for a million-dollar job. Somehow connected to the Clintons. We'll talk about it. Everything's connected to the Clintons. They got their hands on everything. Frank, don't give me Bill that look. That, oh, you know, why, why go there so early? Oh, I didn't go there. It's 6 7 and counting, and you have gone there already, said that Bill Clinton has his hands on everything. But uh, Bill Bratton is leaving, uh, best to him. Clearly, he felt that uh, Mayor de Blasio was so incredibly supportive of the police, he couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> that was a joke. I got um, it. I got it. <laughs> uh, Chris Christie, my good friend over in New Jersey, looks like a little crack in the relationship between him and the Donald. It's hard to be friends with the Donald when the Donald is so, I'm doing air quotes, undisciplined. Mm -hmm. um, I say there's enough to go after Hillary Clinton on. And by the way, telephone number is 877-970-2999, 877-970-2999. I say, listen, Donald Trump, free advice. I don't consult political candidates, but I will say this. There is so much to go after. Hillary Clinton, I'm watching her. Uh, the great uh, Chris Wallace is interviewing her on Sunday. He's saying, Mrs. Clinton, let me ask you this. And I give her credit for finally being interviewed by somebody who's serious. She has no, hasn't held a press conference in 11 years. So I said, okay, there she is. Chris Wallace asks her. So, uh, you know, James Comey, the head of the FBI, said that you were not truthful about the emails. Oh, no, no, Chris, I was truthful. Uh, Mr. Comey said I was. Oh, no, no, can I run you this clip? So there's the clip of Comey saying, in response to the head of the uh, Congressional Committee, what was his name again? Trey Gowdy. Yes, who looks like the guy Malfoy from... Uh, yeah, I was never a Harry Potter Harry Potter. Fan, but yeah, I, I read the first book, I didn't get into it. I don't want to digress. Right. Um, but, but, but the con congressman is, is asking um, James Comey, did Mrs. Clinton provide all of the emails? No. Were they confidential, as Mrs. Clinton said they were not? Yes, they were confidential. Did she leave out? Uh, yes, she left them out. So Mrs. Clinton comes back and she goes, yes, so I told you. I told the truth. No, you didn't. You lied. So you lied about lying. Now, what does this have to do with Donald Trump? Because I got to tell you guys, you know how I feel about you. You know how I feel about Joe. I love you guys. I love this audience. But I will tell you, I posted something on Facebook yesterday saying this. Hillary Clinton is a stone cold liar. She lies about lying. But Donald Trump, there are certain rules in politics, but forget about politics. There are certain rules about human interaction, about decency. And when the cons, K-H-A-N, were up there at the Democratic National Convention, I don't care how you think they got there. I don't care who you think put them up, but in 2004, I believe it was, in Iran, their son, an American hero, fighting on behalf of our country, lost his life trying to protect his troops, his platoon. How do you sit there and say anything other? I remember George Bush, the class act that he was the second George Bush, when he was criticized after going into the war by a mom whose son was, I believe, shot and killed, who she's crying and said, you did this, you did this. And Clinton and Bush walked out with tears in his eyes and said, I can't even imagine how that mom felt. He didn't engage them. He didn't, as Trump said, oh, look at the mother. She was just standing there. Obviously, she wanted to say something, but she didn't because you know, Muslim women can't talk. How dare they attack me? They had no right to attack me. I have sacrificed so much in my life. I've created jobs. I thought to myself, why can't you just shut your mouth once? Why can't you show some compassion and empathy and be smart and disciplined and not attack those who say something about you? You don't always have to do that. They call it punching down in politics. I call it getting into 
an unnecessary situation with people who are grieving. Forget about the Democrats. Donald Trump, your target is a good one. Hillary Clinton, so vulnerable, so weak, so unlikable, such a liar. Why are you focused on the cons? Why are you now going after John McCain? Why are you now not supporting Paul Ryan, who supported you, who you asked to be the chair of the convention that you just did so well at? Frank, Al, you want to help, please? Yes. And uh, then, by the way, don't, don't pick up the phone and call AM970 at 877-970-2999. Do not pick up the phone and say, Steve, you're shilling for the Democrats. You just heard what I said about Clinton, Hillary Clinton. I think she's horrible. 100%. You're right. Um, uh, but first of all, I'm going to go easy on you today because I see you're hurting. You look like you're having a big back problem. I wasn't, I wasn't going to make it. I wasn't going to make a big deal about it because, you know, I'm from Newark. I want to act like I'm tough. Uh -huh. But I'm not. Look, look, you're in a lot of pain. You're in pain, man. I mean, I'm yeah, I'm standing, which I don't normally do to do right. the show. I hurt my back a couple of days ago. Uh, normally, my workout routine is some weights, not too heavy, light. Joe and I, Joe Piscopo, and I talk about this lightweight, heavy right. rep, so we can get some fake definition in our bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, fifty plus. That's what happens. And then, uh, and then I did my cardio on the treadmill and my cycling. Right? right? And then I decided to run on the treadmill. My wife is a runner. And I said, let me run, which I used to do a lot. And I think when I was running, I tweaked. tweaked. Lower back. Lower back. And I had an operation, L L4, oh. L5, and I just was talking. Steve, to I have said this for years, and people have thought I was joking. And you're a uh, softball player. Uh, well, right, which, well, yeah, right. You know what? Which I'm afraid to play. Well, yeah. um, I can assure you, you wouldn't be suffering the same injury if you were playing softball instead Why? of a rigorous workout. Well, hang on. But it's dangerous, those quick motions. First of all, you have to use your hips to generate power. You can hurt your lower back. Well, yes. Is it possible that you can hurt your lower back? Sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, We're getting off the top. Running. We'll get back. Running yeah. is the worst thing for you. Pounding, pounding, it's pounding. It's yeah, I awful. can't run anymore. I used to run. Uh, not, yeah. only, not only do you these. see people yeah. um, dying all the time, you know, these heart attacks while jogging. Stop with the heart attack. I tweak my lower well, back. But I'm just saying that, that this is a warning sign. But. You see in these runners, Warning Steve, sign. seriously, I'm not joking. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm quite fond of you as a friend, yeah. you know, and I, I want you to stick around for a while. Runners get these knee injuries, they get these foot injuries, and they get these back injuries. You're much better off just walking around a little bit. Yeah. Well, guys, listen. <laughs> Running is the worst thing. The worst thing. And look, my, I come from, you know, my, so my siblings. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to talk about that. That's yeah. ridiculous. Uh -huh. um, but my siblings all run. My dad is a marathon runner. My stepmother runs. You know what? They're injured all the time. They're injured. I, I go over to my I dad's last week, and, you know, he's got I, like, some weird knee injury. Oh, dad, what happened? Oh, I was running eight and a half miles the other day. I hurt my, I hurt my knee. You know, You're right. you know, you know who doesn't have a back injury? Me. Because I haven't run since Clinton was president. Oh, uh, um, you know, and you, you know who doesn't have any knee injury? Me. You should not be running, Steve. Honestly. I'm very anti-running. Well, listen. It's not I, a fashionable I, thing to say right I, now. I do want to say true. this. I haven't seen Frank in a couple months. He looks incredible. Thank yeah. you. Well, he's starving you, himself. No, I'm not. You, you no, are I'm trim. Sure you are fit. You look great. Thank you. But I do want to say this. I, I don't want to bring a lot of attention to my back. I did have the surgery a few years ago because I had a disc problem. I'm praying that it's muscular because it came on quickly, an acute situation. Mm -hmm. Saw so my wonderful chiropractor down the Jersey Shore where I was until I came up just to do this show, and I'm going back after this. Right. Um, yeah, thank you for doing that, by the way. I know you, yeah, this is your, you're on vacation, and you came in all the way for uh, – even Will, our intern, is clapping. Even though he's a Met fan, we beat you I guys mercilessly yesterday. Oh, that's not well. Thank you very much. Do you really need to rub that in? No. Yes. We, we, have so little we are. To we are such to. an ADD show. Do you realize how many topics yeah. we can bring up that have nothing to do with where we started? That's yeah. Right. Okay. But oh, so let me address what you. What no, but you go back wanted. to this. A final thing on this. I'm praying that it's muscular. We'll go back to Trump in a second. I'm praying his issue is muscular. Um, <laughs> But I'm going to say this. If anyone does have any lower back remedies, I promised my wife I wouldn't do this, but I break every promise except, you know, the one not to cheat. Um, if anyone does have any lower back remedies that do not involve illegal drugs or surgery. 
eight seven seven nine nine seven zero two nine 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 eight seven seven nine seven zero two nine nine nine. I assume you've done ice and heat. I had ice back. on. No, not heat yet. To, tomorrow. Oh, uh, no, no, no. You got to ice, then you got to heat right afterwards. No, ice drink on, it. Ice, ice on in the first no, 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 forty eight no. hours. No, not not right afterwards. Simultaneously, ice on the right side of your back, heat on the left side of your oh back. Don't that's it. Don't listen. That's what you do. Don't listen to Frank. Simultaneous Don't. fire and ice. He's wrong. Put the ice pack so. on. When you're done with the ice pack, apply heat. You're contracting the muscle. You want to expand it back out again because if you keep it contracted, it's not going to heal. Guys, I'm a Ph.D. You know how close that is to an M.D.? Very not at far. all. Not Very at far. all. Oh, yeah. Very oh, far. Oh. I just laughed. Do you have an answer? Oh, oh, that hurt? Was, trust me. Al's okay. going to do his best to make okay. sure you don't laugh at all today. Oh. I'm going to be very stoked. You see? Yeah, he's he's right. got to get started. You know, people, people ask me all the time about Joe first. Right. But then they ask, how much do Frank... And Al hate each other. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. Not they at all. Actually, they asked me how close they I said, these guys are like brothers. They love each other. It's, it's, the chemistry. That's not true. Cousins. Come 9 Cousins. Cousins. Yeah, Cousins. Cousins who see each other a couple times a year. Yeah, that's right. good, that's right. good enough. Yeah, I don't know about brothers. Al doesn't even talk to his sister. So to that's say, true. Like, oh, point. oh, let me tell you something. I called my, by the way, my sister Teresa. There, you, you're out there, I know. I called her for her 66 birthday. Oh, boy. In fact, I texted her. Did you have to say her age? You ready for this? Ooh, she's going to kill me right now. Mm -hmm. I texted her for her 60th birthday, and she wrote back. I haven't spoken to her in a while. Mm -hmm. You know, we had an interesting it's relationship. Friction, yeah. Right? Yeah. My younger sister, we're tight, my younger baby sister. I, I, I texted her, happy 60th, and she wrote back, what the is so great about turning 60? I said, I don't know. I'm not very close to that, oh but I wish oh, you all the best. Nice. And oh, she man. told, called my mother to say that I only called to rub it in. I said, Ma, I only called to wish her happy birthday. Right, but she said it was a certain number that you brought up. Right, exactly. Happy birthday, my beautiful sister Teresa, sixty. Nice, nice. number. So, uh, what were you saying? No, about uh, Trump. Well, uh, Trump, who's I, seventy, by look, the way. She's a teacher, right, your sister? She knows she's a principal. Oh, oh don't me. you dare sorry, call my sorry, sister. Sorry, sorry, she sorry. was a. Teacher now, she's the principal of Robert Treat Academy Charter School. Big on charter schools. Very nice. Uh, look, I think Trump's biggest problem is the fact that his mouth gets him into way too much trouble. He needs to back off a little bit. And every yeah. time he opens yeah. his mouth, whether it's right or wrong, whether it's politically correct to say or not, you've got to have some, some you discipline. Pull back. Yeah, pull back just a little bit. And by the way, why couldn't he say after the thing went crazy about the cons forget about their reasoning forget about whether the democrats put them up forget forget about that and by the way mr khan is a clearly a decent caring american um they lost their son mid-20s whatever the heck he was an american soldier a, a hero frank what would have been so bad about trump just simply saying you know what i apologize your son was a hero you lost this terrible sacrifice you gave. I didn't handle this well. I'm sorry. Uh, you're, you're right. Everything that you just said is, is fine. Uh, and certainly overall, Donald Trump has not handled this how I would handle it. But to be clear, Donald Trump did put out a tweet saying Captain Khan was a hero. Number Forget one. about a tweet. You say uh, it out loud. Well, okay. Well, that's the other thing, right? And now, uh, instead of, this is where I think the media bears some responsibility for what's going on here, Steve. We need to keep in mind. That who sent Captain Khan to a war under false premises in order to die? George Bush and Hillary Clinton, who voted for it. Who consistently opposed that war? Donald Trump. Had Donald Trump been president, Captain Khan would still be alive. So you know who should be getting these repeated Khan questions? Hillary Clinton. How could you have been so wrong to have been duped by this duplicitous commander-in-chief, George W. Bush? Donald Trump was smart enough to see that that wasn't the case. Now... Let's talk about, you know, uh, about the, where we are now with this. R this is, the press loves this because it's such a distraction. Steve. And Trump gave the, it to them. They are asking Trump, Trump about them. this in every single interview. Oh, do you regret what you said about the guns? Do you regret? Stop asking he about the guns. You know what, Steve? Um, if, they, if this race is waged on issues, whether it's trade, whether it's border security, whether it's China and their currency manipulation, mm -hmm. then Hillary has no chance. Yep. No chance chance. Yeah. This is the only so, chance that uh, Hillary and her defenders have. Who's the biggest focus reason? On what this. is and who is the biggest reason why this race is going to be based on the things that are said every day that are outrageous and off the wall? Who and what's the reason? Hillary Clinton. Yes. Really? I'll tell you yes. what I think. I think when Donald Trump <clears throat> wakes up and says, you know what? The judge who's handling my Trump University case, I think I'm going to say that he should recuse himself because his parents were born 
in a foreign country, even though he was born, I believe, in Indiana. Mm -hmm. uh, well, have you ever Curiel. been to Indiana? I mean, come on. They gave us Dan Quayle. Uh, that yeah. could very easily be conceived. See, we're over here, over here in Lower country. Manhattan. I guess we can get away with saying that. Yes. But last time I checked Indiana, I haven't been there, but it's part of the country. <clears throat> I'm going to say to you that every time Trump wakes up, tweets, says what he says about who he says it about, <clears throat> or throws a baby out of a uh, rally yesterday, um, whatever crazy thing he does... And has Republicans like McCain, like Chris Christie, like Paul Ryan, and like so many others saying, what are you doing? We're supporting you, but we, this is crazy. He is the one that is distracting from the issues, Frank, more than anyone else. Well, My opinion. Uh, okay. My uh, opinion. Uh, you, you, and the media loves it, and the media doesn't want him to win, and the media does have a thing for Clinton, but he's helping. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Well, My I, opinion. All right. Uh, well, I'd love to open this up to and our she's radio. she's very vulnerable. Jury very vulnerable. Back. Hillary Clinton's very vulnerable. Go after her. 100%. I agree. Now, speaking of who's not vulnerable and who is a class act and who I would vote for for president, <laughs> Debbie Duhame is mm. out there on the roads. Debbie, love talking to you. How you doing? Thank you. I'm doing great. I wasn't born in this country. Well, though, so. uh, no, but she was born on a military base. Yeah. So, that's, un yeah. Unlike that's Cruz, Force I think yeah. Debbie is actually eligible to be president. Yeah. Of yeah, course maybe, you are, maybe. Debbie. Yeah. And plus my dad, you know, was an American right. soldier. So yeah. So course, it, yeah. somebody call and tell us if Debbie's eligible to be president. <laughs> She is. But, I but, think so. I, somebody. You know, Just I, I, some random somebody. person. Yeah, yeah. Well, constitutional right. scholar, preferable. <laughs> you know, I'm a little bit nervous, though, about Donald just saying too many things. I mean, he really, he needs to tone it down, don't you think? You know who uh, needs yes. to tone it down? President Obama, who, oh, had the nerve, on, who had the nerve to call somebody else unfit for the presidency <laughs> the same day we learn he's paying for hostages. We have to talk oh, about this. Frank, okay, we will okay. talk about that. But, Debbie, okay. please <laughs> All right, I bring some you. decorum to this out-of-control show. <laughs> Thank you so much. I got to say this because I was, I, was, I was making these wild motions. I go, wow, I feel like Joe Cocker. Yeah. And why, why, he opened for Stevie Ray Vaughan, 1990, Jones Beach. Last time I saw Stevie Ray before he died. Look Tremendous. at you. You say the concert. You say who he opened for. Oh, you yeah. know exactly the location. Great day. Great day. It was the summer. It was uh, July, I think. How about you? Ready for this, guys? I'll I can't give myself. you the date. I'm going to date myself. Yeah. Donna Summer. Oh. 1979. Bad Girls? No. Yeah, Bad Girls. Ready for right. this? Where do they play over in Queens for the tennis thing? Oh, the the uh, Arthur Ashe Stadium. That's where she was. Yeah, nice. Bunch of guys from Jersey over and see it because it was a disco era. Of little, you know, little time, hair a little puffy. I get it. You know, platform shoes. Yeah. Back in the day, that's probably why I got a bad back from the platform shoes. Uh, Steve Adubato, AM nine seventy, sitting in for the great Joe Piscopo with Frank and Al and Debbie and the team. No bad back's going to stop me Good from coming you, in Steve. from the Jersey Shore while I was laying there Thank you. on the beach, relaxing, reading my book, Vinny the Chin, Giganti from Larry McShane. That, by the way, I got that from you. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm uh, looking forward to it. I'm having uh, Mr. McShane on my program, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. I'm looking forward to it. Great P book. P.S. I brought McShane on my show, PBS One on One, with Steve Adubato because I heard about him from Frank. Thank the you. The synergy. Oh yeah. Between Absolutely. this station and the work I do on PBS is incredible. It's it's almost I don't like the word incestuous. It's synergy. That's exactly. what I'm going with. So uh, the telephone number is eight seven zero. Well, you know it doesn't matter because we have no lines open. Yeah. <laughs> at the moment. Could you say the number, Al? 877-970-2999. Hey, Mommy, call in, please, because, you know, I know you're worried about my back. Hey, let's go to, who do we go to first? Cecilia? Cecilia, how you doing? Steve Adubato here. Talk to me. Hi, can you hear me on my speakerphone? Well, well, uh, uh, first off, get off the speakerphone, you Cecilia. Cecilia, you got to get off the speakerphone. Speaker yeah, I know, but you got to get off the speakerphone. I did. Okay. okay. Regular cell phone. Right. That was Al yelling at you, Cecilia, not Steve Adubato. Oh. I would never say that, but oh. thank you for doing that, Al. It's cool. Yeah, Steve is on my uh, Facebook. It's a fan, I'm a fan or friend or whatever you let happen on there. So it's nice to connect with you on the radio. I'm a professor at a bunch of schools in Jersey. I know Mark Stewart, Mark Greenstein, who runs for president. He is supporting Stein and Trump, and not Trump, Stein and Johnson. Hates Clinton, ran against her for New York Senate. Okay. And I'm um, helping him in put her like events in Queens, like libertarian events. So okay. Like so that. you're a libertarian, so, is that it? Now I am. I'm doing work for him at an SAT company, and so I'm doing his politics too. Great. And uh, yeah, third party is the way to go this year. It might be true. What do you think? Third party's the way. So if you're not with Clinton and you're not with um, 
Donald Trump, third party is the way to go. You know, I, what is it, Gary Johnson? Is that his name? He's a libertarian, yeah. yeah. And Actually, then he's having green... a town hall meeting tonight here in New York. Nine o'clock, CNN is going to be broadcasting. Whoa, is yeah. that right? Mm -hmm. Now, Bill Weld, the former governor of Massachusetts, Taxachusetts, is uh, the undercard guy. He's the vice president. For he Canada, is. That's which right. Is fascinating. Yeah, so you have the former governor of New Mexico, uh, two term governor of New Mexico, and a two term governor of Massachusetts, both who served as Republicans. And uh, Weld, incidentally, n goes back years with Hillary. Um, they, they know each other for a long time. And uh, Bill Clinton tried to appoint William Weld as ambassador to Mexico. That's right. As well, Jesse Helms killed that nomination. Fascinating. You happen to know a lot of history. And the, who was the Green Party person? Uh, Dr. Jill Stein. Dr. Who, uh, Jill Stein. Cecilia Not to be to confused there. with Dr. Steve Adubato. That's right. Not a medical doctor, but a PhD. As my kids say, a doctor who can't help anyone. Well, hopefully I can help this audience. Let's go to Mario. Mario in East Rutherford off of Route 3 in beautiful New Jersey, the Garden State. Mario, how are you doing? Steve Adubato here on AM 970. Uh, I'd like to make a suggestion on the back. Did you ever see that thing they advertise on TV where you hang reverse? Oh, Mario, let me tell you something. I was in Dick's Sporting Goods down in, I don't know, Tom's River down in Jersey Shore. It was a little bad weather the other day. And they had this thing that you, you hang on upside down. I saw it. I wanted to get it. Right. Mario, tell me about it. It's uh, the only uh, guys of, uh, well, I'm a lot older than you, but if you're over, let's say, 45, when you first try it out, you're going to be hanging upside down. You have to be supervised because the blood is going to rush to your head. You have to do it kind of, you know, easy. And then, you know, once you get used to it, I, I got to tell you, it helps tremendously because the lifestyle that all of us kind of lead, we're either sitting down or standing up. And the only way to restretch your back, unless something's broken or something like that, oh. is to hang upside down. Mario. Let it, let it, let it, it's something, something to try, Steve. Mario, something. Mario, I appreciate it. Let me ask you this. I don't want to complicate things and make myself sound like a, a basket case, but I sometimes get vertigo every once in a while. Could this potentially yeah. affect my vertigo? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it, it, that, that is a that is a, a a slight danger. That's why I say you have to be supervised on your first two times. You got to so, like kind of do it slowly, and the minute you feel the blood rushing to your it. head and the vertigo starts, then you have to stop. Mario, you do me a favor. Work, um, we're going to get you. We're going to get your number offline. I would like you to personally supervise there me you on the machine. We have Mario. Mario, thank, thank you so much. Information. Let's go. Hey, can we go to Florida? Yeah, I want to go to Florida. I've got a client. Be careful in of Zika. Yeah, I got to do. Uh, that. But yeah, Mario, I got a bank that I go to Florida. I go do seminars. You know, I get paid to do leadership seminars. Uh, no, I didn't. You didn't know that? Yes, well, you did. I, I know Come you get on. paid you... to do a lot of I, things because I have a book coming out next month. Lessons in leadership. Yeah. That's the name I'm of the book. How'd you buy know that? Because you know, you've been talking about it for six months. Have I? Have wow. you? Yes. And did you know that AM 970 was hosting a seminar? Uh, on the book AM 970, the seminar and book signing coming up in the fall? Yeah, October 18th, right? Yeah, oh, she seemed to know so much. That I didn't know, yeah. Yeah. It was a big topic in our staff meeting. But I don't like talking about it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I do uh, speeches and seminar about, leader, uh, about leadership in Florida. Steve, in Florida, I'm so sorry about digressing talking about myself. I sound so much like Donald Trump right now. Um, Steve, what do you got? Steve, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm okay, except for the back. I'm feeling all right. Oh, good. You remember me from Montclair, the photo lab? No. No. Magic color. Magic this, color. This is, not, this is not my man, Steve. This, you by the way. It, buddy, living, living here in Florida. I remember a book you gave me, Speak from the Heart, and you signed it for me. One of the best books you ever wrote, I guess. The only book I ever read it from you. But aside from that. I mean, what what a tough development we got between Hillary and Donald. Uh, oh my God! Well, one's a liar, the other one you you don't know what to think of. Uh, we're in a very tough and difficult development right now, aren't we? Which one you're leading towards, Steve? I'm not leaning toward either one right now, but I can't vote for Hillary and Trump. I don't know if he sticks to politics only. We got a shot. But he got to stick to politics and stop attacking people. I got to tell you, by the way, this guy, Steve, let me just tell you before you let him go. Steve ran the Photoshop in our town in Montclair. And this is the only guy I would trust in my photos. Not that I was ever embarrassed of the photos I gave him. This was old school, man. Like when you, you know, had your photos uh, reproduced. And this guy and his family ran the best Photoshop in town. And it was family run. 
not that it would be because they were an Italian family. They were an Italian family, and I just love these guys. <laughs> and you know how I feel about you, Steve. And the idea that you found us, found me, and got on the phone to call from Florida. I know you're listening on the Internet. I, I have no, I, you have no idea how that makes me feel right now, and you're making me feel connected to, uh, to the day back in the day. I appreciate it, buddy. You got it. Thank you. All the best. Take care. Hey, uh, isn't that funny that people connect? That is funny. It's amazing how social media, the radio, yeah, bring it all together. I love it. You guys are great. Yeah, uh, and by the way, you don't have to be Italian American. You can be Irish. You can be uh, Jewish. You can be Muslim. You can be African American, Hispanic. You can be whatever, because we are a melting pot. Are we not? Of course. Yeah. We uh, can all get along. Yeah. What did uh, David Dinkins say? We're a mosaic. Yeah. Yeah. Something like oh, that. Oh boy. You had to bring him up. The worst mayoral job in the last. We were talking about years. great leaders. Y y uh, David Dinkins no, is a not, great leader. No, I was thinking of someone who wasn't, oh, and right. he came to mind. Okay. You know what, though, David Dinkins certainly um, a lot went wrong uh, during his mayoralty, but it's become so fashionable to uh, pick on David Dinkins. The, you know, you have to give Mayor Dinkins credit for a number of things. One, uh, the appointment of Ray Kelly as police commissioner, who did a great job uh, when the World Trade Center was bombed. Yes. Um, he, the fact that he pushed for a tax hike that was incredibly unpopular popular at the time that allowed um, Mayor Giuliani and, and Mayor Dinkins, quite frankly, to hire thousands of new police officers with the Safe City, st Safe Streets yes. uh, tax. And, um, you know, he, he really uh, was a guy that... Um, it was not a great spokesman for New York City, but he was, I, I think, a very nice guy. And in, in, in a business that there are very few nice guys. So I, I got to tell you something. There is no public figure in New York that you can mention that Frank does not have an encyclopedia. No, that's not true. But I mean, don't get me wrong. I thought it was ridiculous for Bill de Blasio to rename the municipal building for Mayor Dinkins. I, I, but that being said, look, it's okay. so fashionable to pick on David Dinkins. You got to give uh, credit where it's due. Well, I appreciate your fairness. Yeah, fair of course, and balance, absolutely. As my friends at Fox would say. Mm -hmm. What well, do you picks on Cuomo too? Oh, don't, oh, don't say anything about Mario Cuomo. No, Andrew. Andrew, Andrew well, you don't. That's Mario was. Was my hero. Well, uh, what we're uh, we'll talk about it later. You know, actually, here's a list of all of Mario's accomplishments uh, while he was governor. You have a for blank sheet of years. Listen, yes. I was there, there as a young, very young man in 1984 there you go. as a delegate. Whole list. Was, a whole it's list. an empty blank piece of paper that he's showing me. 1984, 24, 25 years old as a Democratic National Convention delegate. There I was in San Francisco. Um, Elected to the legislature in New Jersey, I was in the first row for that speech in San Francisco. I got to tell you something. Um, there was reason to be hopeful. Yeah, it was a speech, Frank. I get it. It wasn't executing. Great orator. Great orator. But I will tell you, hope, vision, gave people reason to be confident. And the fact that he just happened to be of immigrant parents, Italian American, it meant something to me, Frank. You may be able to relate from Staten Island. What do you got, Al? Steve out about it here. I'm sorry. Uh, Deborah Harry, I'm sorry for doing that. We're so behind. There's so many calls. Uh, by the way, could you follow me on Twitter? What's my Twitter, Al? At Steve Adubato. At Steve Adubato. A-D-U-B-A-T-O. I want to thank all the people who are commenting on my back here, commenting on what I'm saying on the air. But listen to us right now, frankly. You can comment later on Twitter, at Steve Adubato. But right now, listen to us on AM 970. Call in at 877-970-2999. And I'm going to... Who am I going to, guys? Max Pizarro. Oh, this is our Max? Yeah. Oh, this is Max Pizarro from Politicker NJ, the greatest political website out there. Uh, Max, how you doing, my man? Good morning, Steve. I'm much better now after having listened to Debbie Harry. Oh. Uh, New raised in New Jersey. Did that? Oh, See, Max, did that do it for you? You like that, huh? I like that, Steve. From Bergen County. See, Max doesn't only just know about politics and pop culture. This guy knows more about politics. He knows more about the presidential campaign. He's the most independent guy you will find. Max, you got to tell me, am I wrong in saying that Donald Trump would be much better off and he'd have a much better chance if he focused on one target, the very vulnerable Hillary Rodham Clinton? Well, Steve, I think that's one point of view. I think another one is that he just needs to keep going after a gold star mother and uh, stay focused on uh, drubbing away on uh, the, uh, the the Khan family. Uh, no, I, I, I think so, Steve. I, I think that, that clearly uh, for him to take his eye off that very vulnerable target, 
we've talked about it and identified that Hillary Clinton is not a likable or trustworthy nominee by the Democratic Party, and yet somehow Donald Trump keeps finding a way to uh, get riled and angered and uh, focused on uh, those targets which most people do deem trustworthy and likable. Yeah, and yesterday, Max, uh, by the way, uh, check out politickernj.com, right, Max? Right. Uh, check right. out the site, everything you need to know about national, but also New Jersey politics in particular. Uh, Chris Christie held a press conference yesterday, Governor Chris Christie, uh, as a, ostensibly to talk about educational issues in New Jersey, but of course... You cannot hold a press conference without talking about Donald Trump. He was asked about this uh, Donald Trump con affair. What did he say, Mr. Pizarro? Well, he, he actually put distance himself on, on this, Steve, and uh, he defended the con family, and, and he criticized Obama's remarks against Trump. So, again, Christie is a very deft political player and knew where to uh, direct his attack, um, he directed it at the politicians and away from uh, the father and mother of uh, a war hero. Do you think, Max, that Chris Christie um, will have any ability moving forward? And obviously he does have a close relationship, a meaningful relationship with Donald Trump. Do you think that he will have any ability to influence Trump to, to not be tweeting Going, I forget about the script. I don't even know what script there is, but just saying these things that are so unfocused on discipline and frankly take away from the kinds of things Trump needs to be talking about to make Hillary Clinton even more vulnerable. Do you think, long winded question, do you think Christie can influence Trump in any meaningful way? Steve, I don't think so. I think Donald Trump has shown himself to be a person who, uh, and certainly a candidate who has not pivoted. Uh, we kept talking all along throughout the primary uh, of uh, his, the the chances of him changing his game plan, yeah. and he never did. And then we yeah. discussed uh, the capacity he had in the general election campaign to pivot, and he never did. And I can't imagine that Chris Christie, one person uh, oh. with all the, uh, the, the, the political... Um, intelligence around Donald Trump, or mm. certainly uh, alliances, uh, would be able to influence him. He hasn't to this point, Steve. Why can't Hillary Clinton simply tell the truth? Why can't Hillary Clinton, in the interview with Fox News' uh, Chris Wallace, when she knew what James Comey, the head of the FBI, said, Max? We're on the phone with Max Pizarro from Politicker NJ. Um, Max, she knew that James Comey said she was not truthful, she did not disclose accurately. When Comey was interviewed, testified before the House committee, he said she was not truthful. And when Chris Wallace asked her, she kept repeating that James Comey said she said told the truth. It was a lie about a lie. Max, am I being unfair? No, you're not, Steve. That's, that's correct. And uh, that's why a lot of people think this race would have been over a long time ago had... Uh, the nominee than anyone but Hillary Clinton. I, I talked to many people last week at the Democratic Convention in Philadelphia who heard the speech by Joe Biden, for example, yeah. and came away convinced that, that he would just uh, annihilate Donald Trump. But Hillary Clinton comes uh, encumbered with all these negatives, and uh, she appears uh, on certain occasions not to be able to get out of her own way. And is it fair to say, before I let you go, Max, that Hillary Clinton's strategy is to be as invisible as possible? Because the it more is, you see her, the less attractive she is. I don't. I don't mean. I, think, I, I don't mean attractive politically. I think so, and I think it's also to uh, to to really uh, highlight the coalition building that the Democratic Party has done to look more like America. Because mm -hmm. when you look at poll after poll, Donald Trump polls consistently well with uneducated white males, and that's the only demographic group where he's doing well, Steve. Well, he's doing well here with educated white males like Frank Morano um, and educated white males like Joe Piscopo. I don't know where Al is. Al seems... Are you with him, too? I, I have not revealed who I am uh, voting Well, I respect for, so. that, but uh, some, some educated white males are with him. I do know that. And, and some other non-white males. But Max Pizarro, a very educated uh, white male um, who is an independent thinker, who is a great political analyst and journalist. Uh, well, the website, again, is? 
politic or NJ, Steve. You're my man. Thank you, Max. Have a great day, buddy. Thank you so much, Steve. You too. Thank you got you. it. All right. Debbie Duhame is out there on the roads telling us what's yeah. going on. By the way, I happen to see Debbie on one of the networks. Can I say that? She is not only great on the radio, she is smart and talented, and I hope this doesn't sound sexist, but she's absolutely gorgeous on the air when you watch her on television. Debbie, you offended by that? No, I'm uh, quite flattered. Thank you very much, Steve. I just I, report it as I see it. I, hey, listen, any woman who doesn't take a compliment, I feel sorry for them. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. By the way, as every, if you're tuning in right now, I'm having some back trouble. I had surgery a few years ago. Hopefully it's not a structural issue. It's a muscular one. I was working out the other day. I was running. I shouldn't have. Frank told me, don't run. I ran. I tweaked something. I needed to get stretched in the studio. How would you describe what happened? So I saw you on your back uh, with uh, Al uh, helping you. It looked like he was on all fours uh, and no, manipulating. No, I was not on all fours. All of, I was doing was I was pushing... Legs. Putting pressure on Steve's knees so that he could uh, push them back to stretch his lower back out. All right. That's well, right. people can see the video on our Facebook page right now, and they're the judge. Let me just say this. I have never felt more secure, more taken care of. Um, he's a big man. He's a strong man. And um, Jennifer, my beautiful wife, I love you. But if I were ever going to leave you, I've always known the way I would. I always play for the Yankees. But if I were ever going to play for the Mets... It would be without. Naturally. His, his wife, Jennifer, might be in trouble. Yeah. Listen, I have no idea where we're going with this, but I want to thank Al for making me feel You're very welcome. good right now. Secure. I feel very Secure. satisfied. Thank you. <laughs> I can't get no satisfaction, but I feel good right now. Okay. Oh, wow. Something's happening right now. We're going to break. Oh. This is uh, Steve Adubato sitting in for... Uh, Joe Piscopo will be back next week. Joe will be back next week. It is my honor, my pleasure to be here with uh, two of the greatest broadcasters in the business, Frank Morano and uh, Al Gatulo and Debbie Duhame out there with traffic. Um, great to be here on August the 3rd. For those of you who do not know me, Steve Adubato, uh, is it wrong to say that I'm a four-time Emmy Award-winning broadcaster with PBS? Is it wrong to say that? Well, wrong or right, you just said it. Is it wrong to say I'm a, uh, a five-time author with a new book coming out called Lessons in Leadership? Wrong to say that? I, I don't think so. No, it's not wrong. Is it wrong to say that I have four beautiful children, three of whom I like very much? <laughs> well, <laughs> I got you there. Yeah, I love them all. They're great. Uh, no, yeah. It's what, I'm a broadcaster. It's what I do. I'm an author. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm motivating people this morning to pick up the phone and dial 877-970-2999. It's also not wrong to say I've got a terribly bad back today, but came in from the beautiful Jersey Shore in the town of Lavalette. Two L's, two T's with a beautiful boardwalk, beautiful beach. Why? Because AM 970 and the great Jerry Crowley mm. and Joe and the team asked. And when they asked, I stopped my vacation to come in to be a part of this team. And it's my honor, my pleasure. Pick up the phone. Give us a call, 877-970-2999. Hey, listen, Bill Brown, before we go to Frank on the phone and Chris on the phone in Brooklyn, real quick, we're going to be talking to my friend Armando Fontura, the uh, Essex County, New Jersey sheriff, one of the greatest law enforcement professionals in the nation about the uh, law enforcement activities. Bill Bratton. Hey, Bill Bratton, stepping down. Mm. Mm. Frank, what's yeah. up? What's up? I was real surprised. You know, it's funny. We were talking about this yesterday with Arthur Idala, um, what de Blasio's second term, heaven forbid, would look like Brattonless. And you know, I, I we were all given our picks of who we'd like to see succeed him and our hopes and fears. And um, I don't think any of us thought that he was going to be leaving within a month. I, I mean, this is really, really sudden. Um, so, you know, I'll take Commissioner Bratton at his word that um, and the mayor at his word on this, that um, this was just an opportunity to go work for this firm that was too good for him to pass up. And a million feels, bucks. Uh, like this is um, he's at a point in his life where and his a point in his accomplishments with the NYPD, that this is the best that he can do. Uh, but. But um, it's disappointing. You know, uh, Bill Bratton is a man that revolutionized crime fighting. Michael Goodwin has a great column in, in the New, New York, York Post, Post today. Right. Uh, Heather McDonald has an amazing column 
in uh, the, I think it was just on the Daily News website, because I didn't see it in the physical paper today, about the role that Bratton played twice in New York City under two very different mayors. Rudy Giuliani. And, uh, yeah, executed masterful results both times. You can um, like Bill Bratton or you can not like Bill it's Bratton. A great cop. But you can't argue with his results. And um, after the assassination of officers Ramos and Lou, the police who turned their backs to Mayor de Blasio, who had just prior to that written de Blasio, many of them, a letter asking, if we die in the line of duty, don't come to our funeral. That's how bad the morale was with the NYPD. Had anyone else been in the commissioner's job, uh, I, I don't know that they would have had the same sort of... Um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, to, Respect. Yeah, to keep the men and women of the NYPD as motivated as, as they have been. He, he's done an incredible job under incredibly trying circumstances. Yeah, Bill Bratton. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, um, I had the opportunity to interview uh, Ray Kelly, the other uh, terrific police commissioner uh, at a different time. Uh, served twice, Right. Right. Yeah, under Mayor Dinkins and Mayor Bloomberg. Yeah, well, fact, he's the longest-serving police commissioner in history. Yeah, on my one-on-one -on -one show on PBS. Uh, and I will tell you, these two guys, at different times, <clears throat> under different circumstances, uh, have meant a lot to this city. And I don't think people appreciate or understand that um, to the degree that you just described. And i got to tell you, um, my view, I don't cover New York City politics on a regular basis, but my gut, my instincts tell me that Mayor de Blasio by and large, overall, in too many instances, does not, has not stood by the cops, has not been as empathetic and understanding to the cops, um, does not mean they're perfect, does not mean there are not horrific incidents that need to be examined, particularly those that involve um, African-American men that have been on video, that need to be investigated, we need to find out what happens, but I will just say this. With some of the protests, with some of his dealings with Al Sharpton, with having Bratton have to sit face to face, shoulder to shoulder on the same podium as Al Sharpton, as if they're somehow equal when it comes to dealing with law enforcement issues, which actually happened. My opinion is that Bill de Blasio has not been as supportive of the law enforcement community and of Bill Bratton as the commissioner of the police department as a chief executive needs to be. And they're never going to say it publicly. But I've got to tell you, it had to be a contributing factor, in my view, without first-hand information. My instincts tell me in Bill Bratton leaving. Now, a million bucks on the, in the private sector, that'll help. But you need that support. Yeah, um, and look, he's uh, he said that... I, I if it was only about money, I couldn't see why he couldn't wait until the end of this term. But whatever. It's not for me to judge. I'm sure his wife, Ricky Kleeman, makes a lot of money as a legal analyst on CBS. I'm sure when he was with Kroll, uh, which was a private consulting firm right. that he was working for and a security firm prior to coming back as police commissioner, he was doing very well. I don't think the Brattons are hard up for cash. Right. But, but there's a million also, dollars there's a million also dollars. corruption investigations. Well, that's, on. see, that's Listen, interesting. It's ugly. It's embarrassing. And... Uh, Listen, uh, we, we wish Bill Bratton nothing but the best. Well, and, and more important for New Yorkers right now is we wish the uh, commissioner-designate James O'Neill the best. Now, by all accounts, I don't, I don't know as much about James O'Neill, but everybody mm -hmm. I've spoken to, uh, including uh, former police commissioner Bernie Carrick and everything I've read about James O'Neill, uh, he's apparently very well respected by the police and a cop's cop. But my fear is, is that Bill de Blasio's um, micromanaging style combined with his lack of knowledge about anything resembling law enforcement um, is that he's going to try and um, dictate to James O'Neill how to run the department. My hope for the next commissioner was and continues to be Joe Esposito, the OEM commissioner, who will not be dictated to by Bill de Blasio. The Office of Emergency Management? Yeah, but he was formerly the uh, chief of department with the, with the NYPD. Okay. Uh, but so uh, I, I just hope, you know, that de Blasio, because, I mean, let's face it, Bratton, Kelly, those guys have a certain gravitas Yes. That is unique. You don't mess with those guys right, too much. Right, right. But de Blasio may think, all right, this guy's never, James O'Neill has never yes. been commissioner before. Not a top guy. He owes his job to me. Yes. I can tell this guy what to do. And just the other point that you made, Stephen, uh, obviously it's a very good one. It's so, something that everybody says about uh, investigating allegations of police misconduct. There are now six separate 
entities, all with authority to investigate police misconduct. You have the Internal Affairs Department within the NYPD. You have the five DAs of New York City. You have the two U.S. attorneys. You have now an inspector general. Uh, I mean, you have civilian a civilian review. complaint mm-hmm. review board. Yep. I, I mean, it's like it's a shorter list of agencies that don't have authority. Right. How many more and, layers and DOI. do you want? And DOI, the Department of Investigation. So you have six different um, and what, what are you saying areas the implications of regress. Of that are? I'm saying that it, when there are allegations of police misconduct, the, 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 they're, they're almost over-investigated. There's no... Uh, I don't think that's the problem. I don't think, um, you know, a, a poli- if a cop does something wrong, either accidentally, as we saw with a Kai Gurley in the, the stairwell, tragic death there, or uh, possibly intentionally, as we saw with Abner Louima, there's many, many ways... For the victims there to get justice. And then, if they really are uh, the victim of police misconduct, you could sue and get millions of dollars. Uh, So um, that's really, I think, so low down on the list of problems with the NYPD. A half mile from here over the last two days, Steve, there's been people protesting at City Hall Park. And they don't want reform. These are their words, not mine. They want to do away with the police department in New York City. Now, I, I don't know about you. <laughs> well, they said they want to return to community policing. No, 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 well, no, no. But- they said, and we have the audio, I can play it for you guys, they said they want to do away no. with the police department they in think New York that, City. They, think, they may think that, but, but those who talk that way, those who um, attack the police department, and by the way, I want to be clear, every single case that I have seen that is horrible and hard to watch and we don't really know exactly what's going on but it appears to be a certain way on video i want those cases we all want those cases investigated we need to understand what's going on we need to understand and appreciate and empathize with why so many african-american disproportionately men are fearful of the police but that has nothing to do with the need to support protect and and just revere and admire the police the, the only the only issue that I have with Bratton stepping down yeah. is the timing of it. These people protesting at the park, they wanted him fired, this and that. We've all known that Bratton is not going to be around if de Blasio is elected for a second term. He made that quite clear a couple of weeks ago in an interview with the New York Times. And now all of a sudden, boom, he retires. He yeah, walks away. Listen, so, to, listen to what one of these protesters said on Monday. We do not believe that the NYPD can be reformed into anything good. We believe... The only way to end police violence and brutality is to end the inherently violent and brutal institution of policing. They had almost... And, and they Frank, could remember, been, that's one person. Right, right. They had thousands of people out there protesting over the last two days. As Bill Bratton left yesterday after doing this press yeah. conference with Bill de Blasio, these guys were shouting at him and singing, na 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 hey, hey, goodbye, as he was yeah. leaving police. This guy has delivered amazing results in Boston, New York, and L.A., and in the private sector. And he's got to deal with the indignity of being jeered by these guys uh, frank they there doesn't mean that there are not people that are um off the wall out of control and say ridiculous things because they don't understand what it takes to keep control in the city that being said hey uh, can i quick calls before we go uh, to a break and then we have sheriff armando fontura of essex county new jersey the largest and most active sheriff's department in the state of new jersey frank in uh, whitestone frank what do you got steve adubato sitting in for joe piscopo one in the a.m. in the morning, I'm listening to you, I'm watching you on TV. I, I love your show. I, I like the idea. That's number one. Number two, if you remember, I once called you deliberately, Steve Arrogato. You thought that was fantastic. I appreciate it that you did like that. Yes. In the meantime, I got in trouble with Joe Bob, but they won't take me on the show. If you can help me there, I'd I love it. But this show is the number one show. I've been hearing Bob Grant, but... The only show that compares with Bob Grant is where you are right now. And I'm a listener. Frank Morano knows. I call quite a few times. And I think I make very uh, cogent uh, questions and and, and results that I've been with. Anyway, I'm getting too excited, but... I love you. Steve. I, I love you too. And keep watching at one. By the way, his reference to one in the morning is our last broadcast on PBS. That's at WNET. We're also on, and at 7 p.m. on NJTV, the public television station in Jersey. We're on, on FiOS every night at 7:30. But who am I to plug? Let's go to Chris in Brooklyn, who may not be watching me at 1 a.m. in the morning on Hi. PBS. Chris, Hi, how Steve. you doing? You don't. Uh, you don't have to say nice things about me. Go ahead. 
Well, no, I, I, I the fellow who called about hanging uh, you upside down was that he took my thunder. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I no, think a few no, people want to really hang worked. me upside down. It, no, 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 no. I, I've been watching you for forty years. I've oh been, no, I've been only on the air for twenty-seven. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, you, in the seventies. No, I got on the air in nineteen eighty-eight. I thought it was earlier than that. But, no, 88. But I'm calling in regards to you should be uh, more circumspect in your uh, attack upon Trump. Uh, what does that personally, mean? I, well, his attack on uh, What do you mean circumspect? McCain, for instance. But you are a man with a doctorate degree who does a lot of detailed work and is, I think, fair in the way you do an analysis. And uh, with that in mind, um, I think that... Uh, that Trump, looking at what who uh, Khan is in particular, as the attorney working with the Clinton Foundation, a man who's working with the Al Bana family and the uh, and uh, 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 Ikwan, particularly Saudi funded, is responsible for implementing Sharia law. Oh in my the God! West. Hey, listen, Chris. Did you know the, that, the, Chris? The guy lost. I tell you, I'm sure you know a lot more than I do, Chris. A guy and his mother, she's a guy and his wife lost a 25 year old son yeah, in Iran. So, 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 so was that a setup too? Bottom line is here's the rule. When people who lose a son or a daughter in war get up and say something that they feel, you know what you say? I'm sorry for your loss and you're grieving and you ended at that. That's it. It's over. Mm hmm. And the sooner mm -hmm. Donald Trump realizes that, even if he thought they were a thousand percent wrong, Debbie Duhame, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's the only move. And that's you heard Governor Christie say, I would never do that. You know why? Right. Because Chris Christie understands human dynamics and politics and people. That's all I'm going to say, Debbie Duhame. It happens to be that I know that our next guest was not a huge is not a huge Van Halen fan, but the Essex County Sheriff Armando Fontura is a huge Sinatra fan. Uh, I do know that. Armando Fontour from Essex County, New Jersey, uh, the sheriff of the largest, the most active sheriff's department in the state of New Jersey. Armando, you are a Sinatra fan, aren't you? Absolutely. Now, Springsteen, Sinatra, all Jersey guys. See, all Jersey guys, Alex, you should have gone the right way, not with uh, Eddie Van Halen. My, my apologies. That's no. okay. Uh, sheriff, by the way, I, we played in a, uh, I would like to say we played, but he played in a charity outing yesterday for the Cheer Me Up Foundation with our good friends Joe and Barry uh, Murillo uh, yesterday uh, of Nanina's in the park. I could not play because of my bad back, Sheriff, as you know. Yes. And so I'm, you said, I don't know, you know, that you complain a lot, that's for sure. Uh, you, 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 the guys here in the studio are shaking their head yes. <laughs> um, but, Ar Armando, we did not call you to talk about my back. We called you to talk about serious matters. Uh, you, you've known Bill Bratton for a long time. You know all the top police professionals, law enforcement professionals in the country. I'm going to ask you this. You and I talk about this off the air a lot. Your perception, your analysis after 30 plus years as a law enforcement professional started as a <clears throat> cop on the streets, 1967 riots in the city of Newark. Armando Fontura was there. He's risen to the highest levels in law enforcement, deals with the FBI, deals with all the other top folks Describe the mood, the morale of law enforcement professionals today, Sheriff Fontura. Well, I, I think that uh, it's uh, some perceive it as a very difficult time for us. I don't know if it's a very difficult time for us. I think it's a uh, it's it's gotten a lot of uh, bad publicity uh, lately. But I, I, you know, going back to '67, there are those who were saying that conditions are the same, for example, in our city and uh, in other cities as they were back in the bad old days of, of late 60s to 1970s. I beg to differ with that. You know, Steve, I, I was there, and I can tell you that the tensions between the police and the community uh, during and immediately after those riots, whether it be Newark, Detroit, L.A., wherever they took place, you could cut the tension with a knife. There was no relationship between us and the public. So I think that to say that uh, those conditions are the same today is totally erroneous, you know, in my opinion, in my estimation. I think that we've come a long, long way. Yes, we have some work to do, you know, particularly uh, as of late. But I think that we have great, great uh, relations with our community, where we work in particular, with, uh, with the Minister's Alliance, with the different community groups. And as I go out 
threw out myself, the prosecutor, Director Ambrose, or any chief in Essex County, as we go out to community meetings, as we often do, as you know, during the week, we don't hear, stay out of our neighborhood. We you don't. We don't hear, don't come into our neighborhood. But, we hear just the opposite. But we but, want you here. Come. We want more of you. We want to see more of you. So I think the relationships are good. We can build, certainly, on them. But I don't think that they go back to uh, bad old days of, uh, of the 60s, for sure. We're on the phone with uh, Essex County, New Jersey Sheriff Armando Fontura, has been at it for more than 30 30, uh, he's, he's, he's so incredibly young, but it's actually closer to 40, as I think about it. I started at probably 50. I started when I was only 13, though, Steve. Yeah, yeah of course you did. Armando, let me ask you this. But Frank Morano, our great uh, analyst over here, broadcaster, was actually talking about in New York City that the, some of the protesters say the most horrific things about the cops. Let's do away with law enforcement. And also, Armando, look, you know this. There was a rally held not too long ago in New York and also sometimes across this country where protesters are yelling, what do we co what do we want? A dead cop. What do we want it now? You can't tell me. And again, that hasn't happened where you are. But when that happens, I mean, what the heck goes on for cops in their heads, in their hearts, protecting their families? Well, it doesn't make us happy, that's for sure. And I think that uh, but being the professionals that we are, we make sure that we are there to uh, protect those folks who are saying those bad, horrible things about us. But we are there to, 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 mar to march with them and make sure that they have a right to say that. Well, this is America. This is our what we do is we protect people's constitutional rights of free speech. And we're there. So we're there. Yes, we hear it. But we are there nonetheless. To do you think cops are under siege? Armando, Sheriff Antura, do you think that some of this rhetoric is contributing to an environment where cops potentially are more a target than ever before? No question about that. Yes, yes, it does. I think that what it does, when some folks out in our community irresponsibly begin to call for the killing of cops, you know, it certainly, you one would think that it probably encourage some who are on the fringe and ready to go off the uh, deep end That's right. to go ahead and do things. There's no question about that. And, Armando, moving forward, not that there's any one solution, any one thing we do, what do you recommend? Because you've been having these conversations with uh, African-American religious leaders, community leaders for a long time, and there's no guarantee that we keep things under control where you are. But what are some of the things that need to be done? Well, I think that, like I said, I think that we have the uh, the basic uh, requirements to, to, to move forward and improve relations with our community. We need to meet on a regular basis. We need to sit down and have dialogue and work out problems and reach out for those who might be not be on the same page that we are. But we need to build on that. You know, I know it's you, you, sometimes you can even get tired of it, you know, but we don't get tired of it because that's what we have to do. We have to go out there and work with our community and listen and hear them and say, yes, we don't have to agree with everything. No, we don't agree all the time, you know, but that's Listen, the bottom line is that we, in this business, we recruit from the human race. And we're going to have some folks who come to us with some prejudices and some problems and, some, and they do stupid stuff. So we have to admit that we do that and uh, get the public to understand that we do recruit from the mm. human race. So bear with us, work with us. When you see someone that doesn't belong in this business, help us to get rid of mm. him or her. Give me 20 seconds on Bill Bratton. You know him. I know Bill Bratton for a long time. Bill Bratton, uh, the, uh, Robert Peel was the, the, the father of policing. I think he's the father of modern policing. I think that Bill Bratton was a uh, tough, uh, backbone guy who was very creative. And he did an awful lot for us with the uh, embracing the broken windows strategy, but also bringing Comstat right. into, the, into Statistics. Bear. Statistics. You look at the numbers. I mean, when Bill Bratton took over first, his first city in New York, New York was out of control. You remember that? Yep. You couldn't go into that city without getting hassled, getting That's right. squeegee, getting groped. Rudy you Giuliani. Know? He brought discipline back into that city, and he brought, the crime rate is so far down in New York. And so, therefore, you know, Ray Kelly did a great job, but we all built on what Bill Bratton started. He created most of this modern stuff. I like Bill Bratton a lot. I think... Uh, He'll be missed, but uh, like you said, it's time for him to move on. Essex County, New Jersey Sheriff Armando Fontura, um, a great sheriff, a great friend, and uh, oh, I know he listens to AM 970. He's also a big fan of the great Joe Piscopos as well. Thank you, Sheriff. My pleasure. Take care, buddy. So what are you doing after the show? Are you going back down to the Jersey Shore? I am uh, actually, my wife is coming back from Jersey Shore. We, we're going to, hey, 
you give me a perfect opportunity to uh, to say that I am staying a little bit longer today because it is the 60th birthday, not just of my sister, but of a very close friend of ours. We're going to his birthday party tonight. I will be going with my bad back and all my beautiful wife, Jennifer, to our friend Barry Marillo, one of the owners of Nanita's in the Park. Oh, nice. Um, and the Park Savoy restaurant. Uh, they own a bunch of different places. Um, Barry, uh, happy birthday, buddy. I know you're part of the charity outing yesterday. You and your brother, Joe, you organized it for the Cheer Me Up Foundation, and we will be there tonight, bad back and all, heading back to the Jersey Shore after that to try to relax and finish uh, the great book, The Chin by Larry Larry McShane. McShane. And I'm also, also, guys, I'm also reading another book. By the way, this is Steve Adubato here. I'm reading another book, uh, the Hamilton book, mm-hmm. the real Hamilton Wait, book. Which right. one? The, the Ron Chernow that, book? Yes, the, Ron, the the big fat book. Oh, don't criticize <sighs> it. I see your face already. You know what? I am so over it. You know, Hamilton's buried next door, so I don't want to be disrespectful to people living on our block or not or residing on our block, so to speak. But I am so over this wall-to-wall Hamilton celebration. Look, I give the guy credit, right? You know, he basically created our modern financial system. Yeah. And he gave us a great newspaper, the New York Post, without which we wouldn't be able to see Melania Trump nude twice in one week. Thank you, Alexander Hamilton. Wait, which one was Melania? I saw the picture of Melania. Well, that was and Monday. Well, so Sunday they just had Melania right. naked, and then on Monday she was on the left. I think. And Monday she was with another they, woman. They, that right. was the fastest selling post uh, uh, front page since Hamilton invented yes. the paper. So they get, show Melania and another woman naked. I don't know who the other woman was, but. It was something. It was, yeah, okay. But what's your listen real quick? What's your problem with Hamilton? Because I'm fascinated by it. Right, because um, he he wanted number one a monarchy. He wanted a monarchy, and and we so does Trump. Uh, well, <laughs> no, he doesn't. That's the thing. Trump is a populist, a Morano style populist. Oh, Hamilton no, Frank, he's was not your lead, as buddy. an elite, as elitist as you can be. Uh, I'm much more of a Jeffersonian. I believe in democracy. I know that upsets a lot of our audience, but I believe in democracy. Yeah. Hamilton did not. Okay, well, listen, he I'm believed in elitists. We're, what we were saying is, I'm going back to Jersey Shore. Sorry. I'm going to try to read that book and relax and hang out. But uh, listen, listen, uh, Frank. Listen, can we talk sports? Like, sure. Okay. Let's um, go Mets, baby. 7-1 yesterday. All right, easy. Uh, first easy. of all, I want full disclosure. I, on PBS, I like to disclose my conflicts or perceived conflicts in my relationships uh, and, and put it all out there. I'm a huge Yankee fan, and um, it was hard for me to watch the team be dismantled. Mm-hmm. Two of the three great relievers, uh, Chapman, right, who was a Chapman. fine, upstanding citizen. Well, <laughs> for the Yankees. <laughs> Well, I meant, you know, in his, yeah, I know, in his his God, God knows what's going on there. Um, and also Miller, great left-handed pitcher, mm-hmm. gone. And I will tell you, a guy who had 40-ish, whatever the heck he is, Carlos Beltran, best hitter on the team, let right. him go. Right. Uh, so the heart of the team is gone. So clearly Brian Cashman, the general manager, has decided to move on, go with a younger team. Does that mean they're giving up for this season? Well, I think so. And And look, let's face it, you had two months left of Carlos Beltran, and then he was leaving. I mean, there was no way you were resigning him to any kind of money. Get something for him while you can and retool the farm system. Araldis Chapman, while people were upset that they got rid of him, uh, the Cubs are going for it now. They're looking to win a World Series. You can get Chapman back next season. How? It's basically Because he's a two-month rental. He's a free agent at the end of the season. So the Yankees could certainly get him back uh, as a free agent. They got rid of Ivan Nova and sent him to the Pirates because they're not planning on re-signing him at the end of the season. His contract is up. So, again, get value for him while you can. I don't disagree with any of the moves that Cashman made. I think he's retooling the team. They're trying to lower salary, which brings us to Alex Rodriguez, who popped up to end the game last night. Um, his days what did he do last night? Done. Popped up to end the game. Pinch hit. Um, there are not that many opportunities for him. They are trying to bring in younger players now. They're bringing people up from AAA and AA uh, to see where they're going to fit in the Yankee hierarchy mm-hmm. next year. Uh, he is owed $43 million by the Yankees. The only caveat for, for Alex Rodriguez right now is breaking the home run record. I don't think he's going to do it as a Yankee. Now, would another team take him as a flyer to kind of, you know, help them to, uh, you know, to break the home run record and get fans in the seats? Probably, but if, if you're the Yankees, anywhere, sorry for interrupting. Now, if, if you're sorry for interrupting, if you're the Yankees, if right. you're Brian Cashman, do yes. you actively? Well, you can't. I, you can't shop him. You can't shop him. Right. Do you shut Alex Rodriguez down? Pay him his money to go away. Open up the roster slot for somebody else. Do you yes. do it? 
I, I do it. I, I think, look, I think in a perfect world, I think the Yankees are hoping he just says, all right, I'm retiring, I'm walking away. He's too proud for that. He's not going to do that. And, again, he's got 43 million reasons why to stick around. He strikes around. out and pops up all the I time. What's that, so but, proud about that? But the point is, any other player, look, Derek Jeter, a couple of years ago, realized, look, I'm, I'm declining. I, I, I don't have the skills that I once had. That's because he's a class leave. act. He gets it. A-Rod has been going down in numbers. I mean, look, last year what you got out of him was great. Nobody expected it, but he was a year removed from baseball. Now it's, you know, you're two years later, he's 41 years old. He can't put up the numbers, and he's strictly a DH, and he can't hit. Time to say goodbye. I agree. But it's $43 million the Yankees have to eat, which is, you know, a lot of money. But real quick, the Mets, what happens for the rest of the season before they're trapped? Well, look, I think uh, I think Sandy Alderson made a great move by getting Jay Bruce, even though he went 0 for 4 last night. The guy is, uh, you know, can hit with runners in scoring position. He plays a decent right field. He's going to produce numbers. That's what they need. The problem with the Mets is their starting pitching is not as great as advertised. Uh, you know, you, you, uh, DeGrom is good. Uh, Syndergaard is good. Uh, Everett, eh, okay. Uh, Bartolo Colon, listen, whatever you get out of a 43 year old at this point, you gotta, you gotta say that's fantastic. But their middle relief is still an issue for the Mets. Uh, real quick, uh, give me 30 seconds. Uh, Giants, Jets, predictions. I think the Giants have to be a playoff team this year or Jerry Reese is out of a job. Uh, I think the Jets are all in and going for it now. And the fact that Tom Brady has suspended the first four weeks of the season, if they are not 3-1 and one, uh, by the end of those four weeks, the Jets are in trouble. That is a very, very tough division. Who's the this quarterback? Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, $15 million, guaranteed, one season. So they've got to win now. If they can't win with him, they're going to be retooling. Geno has a place? Yeah, as the, as the caddy. He's not going anywhere else. All right. Listen, you know what it's like to be able to have such a smart sports guy on board? No. Yeah, it's great. Did you just say, <laughs> Frank, Frank, you know, Frank. See, that's the whole cousin <laughs> thing. Not brothers, Debbie, cousin. Debbie, you know. why can't we all just be so supportive of each other? Why? I know, I know. It's a, no, we, he knows we we a lot about we beer. Are. I'll give him that. <laughs> he does. He knows I a lot do. about beer, too. Beer <laughs> and sports and life. And, and I'm the rain man of beer. Debbie knows a lot about life and politics and traffic and yeah, the things we traffic. need to know about uh, life. Yeah. Um, Debbie, um, what do you got out there? Thank you, Frank. Thank you, uh, you Frank Sinatra. Thank you, Al Gattulo. Thank you, Frank Morano. Thank you, Debbie Duhame. Thank you, Joe Piscopo, for allowing me to, I'd like to say, sit in your chair. But in fact, I am standing because of my very sore back. But it's not about my back. It's about this great audience on AM 970. I'm not going to make it about myself. Certain people running for president try to make it about themselves. Everything's about themselves, Frank Morano. Some things are not about yourself. Some things are about other people. Yes. And that's why I'm asking the people listening right now to pick up the phone and call 877-970-2999. Steve Adubato here sitting in for Joe. Listen, there are things on my mind in the last hour of this show. We'll talk a little bit later to my good friend Stephen Witte, who is a film critic about the top films out right now. But right now, I'm going to do a little politics. i got to tell you, I did this in the 6 a.m. hour, and if you weren't listening because you weren't up that early because it's summer, it's the 3rd of August, I'm going to say it right now. Yeah, I think Hillary Clinton's vulnerable. I think she lied on Fox News on Sunday to Chris Wallace when he said to her that James Comey, the head of the FBI, said that you were less than truthful about the emails. And she said, no, he said I told the truth. Well, you didn't, and you lied about lying. But Donald Trump is the gift that keeps on giving to the Democrats because he went after the cons who lost their son in Iran by talking about the mom who wasn't speaking. And he said, oh, guess because Muslim women can't speak. And then he said, how dare they attack me? Well, I don't know, maybe because they lost a son, they have a right to do that. John McCain told him you had no right to do that. You were wrong. Paul Ryan said you were wrong. Chris Christie, who's the one of the biggest Trump supporters, one of the best friends he could have, very loyal first one to be there of all the candidates who ran against him, endorsed him, said he would never have done that. The first New York, first congressman, Republican congressman from New York, what's his name, Frank? Richard Hanna. Mr. Hanna, Congressman Hanna, Republican, voting for Hillary Clinton. Maria Camella, Chris Christie's top communication advisor, no longer in that administration, but I'll tell you, very well respected, voting for Hillary Clinton. Meg Whitman from out in California, very well respected Republican, voting for Hillary Clinton. I am saying this. Hillary Clinton is a terrible candidate. I've never voted for her in my life. Don't want to vote for her. But Donald Trump is making it very easy because he's not focusing on her. 
He's focusing on all the wrong things. Frank and Al and everyone listening, pick up the phone. Give me a call. 877-970-2999. Steve Adubato, tell me where I'm wrong. Trump supporters, pick up the phone. Tell me what I have wrong. And don't pick up the phone and tell me what's wrong with Hillary Clinton, because I already know. She was so wrong when she testified before Congress and finally got so peeved that said, what's the difference how they died, those four Americans, including Ambassador Stevens? She's horrible. Don't tell me that. This is about Donald Trump and the fact that I don't know if he has any compassion, humanity, and such a, such a narcissist that he's blowing this election. Couldn't even handle the baby crying yesterday, Frank. Well, look, I think he was doing what a lot of Americans would like to do when they're caught with a crying baby and yeah, have that ba yeah, crying yeah, baby yeah, removed. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Frank, that may be true. Yes. But show a little discipline. Show a little class. Show a little compassion and say, you know what? Babies are babies, and bring the baby up here and have a little fun. Look, He's so thin-skinned. Donald Trump you can't be that. Skin. You can't be tweeting and saying nasty things about everyone who says something about you. And now the fact that he's not endorsing Paul Ryan, who, who he asked, cares? Listen, well, I, I good. I don't want him endorsing Paul Ryan. Then why do they? Why do they have? The then why do they have Paul Ryan? Why do they have Paul Ryan chairing the Republican? Because convention? that's his role as Speaker of the House. But Paul Ryan. I think, I mean... Now you're going to divert. No, well, who's diverting? Here's, here's what You don't like what Trump's doing, and you like him. No, no, well, I don't like getting into a, a you know, a... Pee-pee uh, -pee match. With, with the cons. I think that's a distraction from focusing on the issues. Uh, and but, it's disrespectful to all Gold Star families who lost a loved one. Yeah, you know it, Frank. Well, it's not... I don't think it's disrespectful to all Gold Star families. What did he really do? He called Captain Khan a hero, which he is. He did for that dying, only when for, He didn't say it for first. Dying, he tweeted it. Dying he say in it a publicly? war, in a war that Hillary Clinton, John McCain, Why did he mention and Paul the Ryan all supported. Why did he mention the because mother? Because what was she doing up there? She, she's, she's the mother of a, of a soldier who was no, killed who couldn't speak. Allowed, she's being used as a political prop. Oh, my God. Frank. Now, I don't know about you're you. You're better than this. What? No, I'm not. I'm much worse. Yes, you are. No, but um, listen, Steve. I, I don't know about you, but I would never allow uh, the death of a loved one to b be used at, That's what for someone's cons political chose to advantage. Do. The cons as a family chose to do that. Yeah, uh, but see, I don't understand. You don't see Donald Trump. The Republicans it. had a woman up there. Right, but who I, lost I, I didn't like that either. By the like way, she had a right to say that yeah. I blame Hillary Clinton for my son's loss. I didn't care for that either. Uh, but I respect honest. her right to do so, it. Right, so do I. Now that each side did their thing, right, let, rather than focus on all this, but let's, look how Hillary let's Clinton talk about the issue. How did Clinton, Hillary Clinton deal with it? She didn't let she said, listen, she had a right to say what she wanted. Why couldn't Donald Trump be? He should have. He handled it poorly. I, and by I the way, it shows it. a lack of maturity and being an adult that has to be present. And by the way, Frank, you and I both know it's a temperament issue. Well, uh, you know, let's talk about temperament, right? You think Hillary Clinton, goes, ha Clinton. has the temperament to be president? Well, that's I'm worried about well, her, too, so, Frank. Look, Steve, you have a choice of two candidates with very different visions for the country. You have one who wants open borders, one who wants a secure border. You have one that has no problem with these endless interference in Arab civil wars like Libya, How's that Iraq, Those and are issues. Syria. Legitimate right? issues. These are issues. Legitimate right? issues. These are the stakes. And all this stuff... This Mexican judge, the cons, uh, the crying baby, it's all a distraction. Don't allow yourself to be manipulated by the media, Steve. No, it's uh, Donald Trump and what comes out of his mouth and the fact no, that No, because he keeps getting asked about it. Why aren't they asking him about currency oh manipulation God. in China? Frank. Why aren't they asking him about renegotiating so it's the NAFTA? Yes, it's, it's yes, the media. yes. Donald Trump does not bring this on himself? Uh, he does to some extent. He does. I mean, he, he should be using this as an opportunity to talk about issues. Then why are like Republicans going issues. after him? Why are many top well, I'm, Republicans? I'm telling you, right? Because Paul Ryan, John McCain, they How have. How about Chris Christie, who lo who really respects this uh, guy? Sour grapes over not getting picked for vice president. Oh my! Sour God. grapes. Um, uh, now, uh, in terms of Paul Ryan and Chris Christie, uh, Paul Ryan and John McCain, all these guys are for endless war. All these guys are for open borders. All these guys are for. A continuation of the Republican establishment status quo that they and all their buddies have done real well from. What, if you show me a guy like Jeff Sessions that abandons Donald Trump, then I'll it's say, okay. Happen, Frank. okay. Well, then, you, if he keeps this up, 
if Trump keeps this up, show me a guy like General Flynn, a Democrat, by the way, who abandons Donald Trump, then, I, you know, I'll, I'll be moved. Frank, uh, but here's, if you're taking a guy with a personal agenda, a, a personal grudge like Chris Christie and guys that have a professional disagree. and different vision of the country, like Paul Ryan, at Open Borders and John McCain, Endless War, then I'm not impressed. Okay. I don't want uh, Donald Trump supporting those guys. You know, uh, the, a bunch of victims, mothers of people who have been killed by illegal aliens, held a protest in front of Paul Ryan's house mm. last weekend. And I didn't see anywhere near the media Frank, coverage of that Frank. that I saw of the cons. You'd, you'd be good at having all. a filibuster in Congress. Oh, right sorry. Now. All right, no. I'm but, just going to say that. Sorry. Respectfully. Well, you throw out four different questions, and they, respect, you know, I'm trying to respect, respond no, you're to each good. one. You're good. That's why you have a great show on Sunday mornings. But i got to tell you this. My opinion is that Donald Trump needs to show a greater degree of compassion and empathy. Agreed. And when he was asked about the issue of sexual harassment in the workplace, all of the Roger Ailes case over mm -hmm. at Fox News, if his daughter were harassed, all he said was, ah, she's a strong woman, I expect her to go find a different job. That's it was the wrong. The it's the wrong answer. The answer was, are you kidding me? If that happened to my daughter, she needs to go to HR. She needs to fight it because women should never be in that position in the workplace. And i got to tell you something. His instincts are not compassionate and empathetic, and you can still be tough and strong and do those things. My opinion. I don't have an issue. And I'm with, no Hillary Clinton fan I don't have again. An, I don't have an issue with uh, Donald Trump not endorsing John McCain or Paul Ryan. I want him to be real and truthful and not be fake like a lot of po – the, there are That's many fine. politicians there are. I think the other issue is why Republicans and Democrats are frightened of Donald Trump is because he doesn't need any of them in terms of special interests. He doesn't need any of that stuff. So they're afraid. He hasn't to date. He hasn't. But he's changing the status quo of what, whether you like it or not, he's changing the status quo of what politics are. And I think people are seeing it from two different sides. They look at Hillary Clinton and saying if she gets elected, same old you know, good politics. My, I'm, not. I'm, not saying it's, I'm not saying good or bad. Um, okay. I think they look at Hillary Clinton and say, oh, same old stuff if she gets in. Some people look at Donald Trump and say, well, maybe he's going to change things up. The only way you're going to be able to change government, it's not by who's going to be president. It's by who's in the Congress and in the Senate. Those are the people. If you want to get them out, you got to get them those people out of office. Al, I hear you. Donald Trump will change things. But if all of a sudden somebody from another country, by the way, Frank, how the heck are you okay with him saying the things he's saying about Putin? I mean, oh! I, I love oh, what he's saying. Oh, about Putin. stop it. Let me tell you something. Oh, Putin says nice things about me, so how could I say anything mean about him? I don't know, Mr. Trump. Maybe they're not really our friends. Maybe they um, don't have the best intentions for us. If anybody says something nice about him, Frank, he is so much of a narcissist that he can't bring it in himself. He doesn't have the. Intellect doesn't have the maturity to say, you know what, let me look at this strategically. You kiss his butt, he says nice things about you. You criticize him, he can't find a way to bring you in. He has to attack you, your motives. Listen, let's go to some calls. Frank and Astoria, Queens, beautiful Astoria, Queens. My first wife was Greek. Astoria was their place. My son is Greek from my first marriage. That's why I love Astoria. What do you got, Frank? Yes, thank you, Steve, for taking my phone call this morning. Uh, you know, I just want to comment on the uh, resignation or the stepping down of Commissioner Bratton. Go. Uh, I believe that, that, yeah, he actually did that because he, he, he saw the time frame that he has. He has his limitations as a, 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 a more of a, a more aged law enforcement official, and he has a family. But in general terms, as you were saying before, you know, uh, the police are under siege. But I agree. There are different law enforcement opinions. I happen to be a former civilian volunteer in New York City Auxiliary Police Officer, formerly of the 114th Police Precinct. And I don't agree with everything that the NYPD is doing at this time, because generally, if you look at constant reports in my command, felonious assaults are up, grand loss in the auto is up. I even wrote a, an article. Get right to it, Frank. Do me a favor. I appreciate the background, but yeah. get right to it. Yeah, look, I know former Commissioner Howard Safer, who is the, the uh, external affairs, uh, vice president of external affairs in the New York City Police Museum, which happened to be an inactive member. I believe that law enforcement has different varying opinions, but the law is the law in general, and we should try to work with the police. And I think we should try to understand each other a little bit better before we make rash decisions. These people who are assassinating, and that's the exact word I, 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 agree. I should use, assassinating officers, have no 
uh, they, they have probably long rap sheets, criminal records. I don't they know what they no have, and it doesn't matter. Because when you go, after, you go after cops, I don't care what your rap sheet is. You need to be dealt with in the most severe way, and we need to send a message that you are not going to be tolerated in those actions. Charlie Finch. Charlie, what do you got? Steve Adubato here. Steve, who has a bigger inferiority complex, Donald Trump or Frank Morano? <laughs> oh, listen, you're not going to get me to say one bad thing about Frank Morano, not one. Now, you know, there is a path to getting someone else elected really quickly. Gary Johnson and Bill Well need to step up to their game so they get 15 percent in the polls and make it to the first debate in Hofstra. Then they actually win a couple of states like Colorado, New Mexico, Alaska, Maine, and throw the election into the House. Once it's in the House with a Republican majority that votes state by state, the Republicans who Trump has offended don't vote for Trump. Neither Trump nor Hillary gets a majority in the House. You throw it to the vice presidential election. The Senate chooses between Kane and Pence, and one of them is president. It's a million to one shot. Let's go for it. Charlie, I hear you. Appreciate your thoughts. Uh, Steve Adubato here with Frank and Alan. Debbie, let's go to real quick. Alex in Brooklyn. What do you got, Alex? Steve Adubato here. Go. Hey, guys. Um, I just wanted to say I disagree about yeah, Steve, your analysis about how, you know, Trump is this or that in regards to his comments about the Trump family. He didn't attack their military sacrifice or their sound. He actually praised that. And what he did attack, and I think he had a right to, was the fact that the Trump family lied about Trump's position that if he was president that they wouldn't have gotten in, which wasn't true. And uh, also, I don't think the family has a right to say anything they want because of their son. I mean, come on, there has to be limits. They can't say anything they want. So what did, what did they say that was so terrible? What did they say that was so terrible? Uh, well, they lied. They lied. They went up there. They went up there and they lied. They said that if Trump was president, they wouldn't have gotten in. They were also, from a country. They were from a country. They, they were from a country that includes the countries that he said if you were a Muslim, you couldn't come in. Temporarily. How okay. long? How long? And How long? However long the intelligence services deem necessary until we can do background checks. So what about if it was so long that this soldier who came here as a hero and fought for the American uh, military forces couldn't have been there and couldn't have been a hero and died for our country? What about that? This was to How long ago did they come in? This was <laughs> way back then. It wouldn't have happened. Right. Okay. Uh... Appreciate it, Alex. Uh, Steve Adubato uh, here for Joe Piscopo. We'll be back on Monday. By the way, at uh, what time is Arthur sitting in? Arthur Idella sitting in for uh, John. He will be on from 11 to 1 today. John Gamlick still recovering from a broken kneecap. You might ask the question. It's a fine question. I don't blame you for asking it. Why aren't you sitting in, Frank Morano? Because beginning at 10 o'clock, I will be across the street at 42 Broadway, the sixth floor. This is a public proceeding. Everyone is open to, to welcome to come. I will be putting on quite a show before the commissioners of the New York City Board of Elections on an, kind of an arcane, uh, boring technical matter, but I plan to inject a lot of colorful personality into my presentation. I really appreciate that, but I actually, I wasn't curious as to why you weren't doing it, but I'm glad you uh, <laughs> shared with that, that, that uh, and I know Al wasn't either interested. Al, by the way, when can people catch your show? Uh, craft beer cast Saturday nights eight o'clock right here. When can people catch my PBS show? Uh... Uh, what is it? Is one o'clock in the morning? Is seven o'clock at night on PBS? And one o'clock in the morning? Is that correct? You just said that again. Yeah. You're just repeating yourself. What are you, Rain Man? Yes, I am. Of what? I'm the Rain Man of craft beer. Uh, All right. Okay. Uh, well, uh, by I'm the an way, excellent it's, drinker. It's, uh, NJTV, the PBS station in New Jersey, at seven p.m. One on one with Steve Adubato at uh, seven thirty on FiOS and at one AM the late night cast. I'm against some of those late night shows on the PBS flagship WNET one on one with Steve Adubato. Listen, but I'm not plugging and by the way, when do we have in the fall the um AM nine seventy, the Salem Business October Breakfast? October eighteenth. October eighteenth is gonna be a lessons in leadership my Bergen new Community book Community College. Bergen Community College, my new book Lessons in Leadership coming out. I'm gonna have a book signing seminar. I'm gonna invite everyone there. It's gonna be a party it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And you guys are going to be there as well. Uh, listen, we're going to go through as many calls as possible and tell everyone right now, get to the point, be concise, be clear. This is not a rambling Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump speech for the presidency. John in Atlantic Beach, go. Hello, Steve. Hello. Morning. Morning. Um, okay, so we can agree this is a binary election. 
You got either Clinton or you have Trump. And you have to look at the big picture, what each one represents respectfully, respectively. Um, Hillary Clinton representing globalism, Donald Trump representing nationalism. Look at globalism, the effects that it has on Europe and in business, the country, our jobs. Then look at nationalism and a return to the Constitution. And ultimately, that's the decision we all have to make, regardless of the pros and cons of their idiosyncrasies and their little personality traits. That's the bottom line. Gotcha, John. Appreciate it. And let's get out of NATO. No big deal, right? Okay, sure. Uh, Ralph, in uh, somewhere in New Jersey. Ralph, Steve Adubato, sitting in for Joe. Yeah, Steve, you know, this uh, man Obama has the audacity of the dope to be telling, uh, you know, the Republican and what we need to do with Trump. This man has some kind of an unmitigated girl, in my opinion. Okay? That being said, you know, the, uh, I have said this before, I'll say it again. The longer this goes, this man Obama becomes wild and worse, okay? That's the sad story state of affairs in our country right now. I long for the days of Reagan when we have peace and prosperity, okay? And go Trump, go deliver us from Obama and make America wonderful again. Thank you so much, Ralph. Appreciate it. Go down to beautiful Brick Township, New Jersey, down at the Jersey Shore, where I'm heading after the show, down on vacation. Uh, that's, I believe, it's, I think it's Route 37 down at uh, the Jersey Shore, Tom. Is that right? You're right about that, yes. You know, uh, typical, typically of a liberal like you, who do misconstrue uh, Trump's statement. Right, Tom, Tom before you go any further, that. Tom, before you go any further, typical of a liberal like me, who trashed Hillary Clinton as a liar, who said that she lied about lying on Fox News this weekend, who said that she said that what difference does it make about the Americans who died in Benghazi? I'm sorry, how typical a liberal would that be to you, Tom? Yeah, but you're going against Trump. He's our only hope. I'm sorry. I'm, right? I'm sorry. Maybe I'll try this one more time. How typical yeah, is it? How typical saying. is it? Tom, one more. I'll give you a chance, but here's the thing. You're going against Trump. I'm liberal. going. One second. Period. So, so let me get this straight. So if I am critical of Hillary Clinton in the most clear and unambiguous ways, but I'm also critical of Trump in the most clear and unambiguous ways, that's a liberal to you. Yeah, because the whole country is depending on Trump, regardless of how stupid he is, where you still have to put him in office. That's Got our it. only hope, because if she gets in, we're finished. What a compelling argument that is. Let's go to, uh, that was compelling. I, I tried to say to folks, do not, Get on this phone and tell me that I'm flacking for Hillary Clinton. I will tell you once and again and again and again. I'm not going to keep telling you why, how, how bad I think she is, but I'm telling you right now, I think he's more dangerous than she is, but I think she's very dangerous. Quick question. Uh, do you, have you made, even if you don't want to say, have you made a decision uh, for whom you will vote? That's a no. No. That's a no. Am I close? Yes. Is Trump making it easier for me right now than I thought he would? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very interesting. And I was telling you, I talk about this one, Frank. I talk to our kids about this all the time. I was actually thinking of not casting a vote for president, and I may now. That's how much I dislike Hillary Clinton. I'm going to say that. Go to the Bronx. Lisa, Steve Adubato here. I love the Bronx. I love the Bronx. Boston yes. Post yes. Road. Yes, Steve, I think that you should listen to Debbie Duhane, because the second day in a row I've heard her saying very smart things to you, and and you don't agree with her, but she's got I, what, some great what, points. I, I dis you should, I, you I don't guys disagree should with Debbie. Treat, well, she she had some points, like about um, um, Trump's ban um, with okay. Muslims coming into the country. Okay. There's ways you can look at that to where he is right, and she was right. So I'm just saying. So you think it's doable, Lisa? Uh, which is doable? The, the, quote, ban on all Muslims coming into the U.S. You think it's doable? I think what is doable is to ban extremists. No, no, he said all Muslims. Extremists. Because Muslims, Muslims, Muslims do not just come from the Middle East. No, no, they I, come from Asia. Any, in, they come from Europe. They, they're coming from anywhere. I know. So I'm going to ask so you, you again. Could, say, so I'm going to ask you. The, he called for a, quote, ban on all Muslims coming into the U.S. Do you believe that's doable? I think if there's another Florida um, massacre, yes. No, do you think it's actually enforceable? 
Like you could ban all. I Muslims. think it's enforceable because we do not protect non-Americans under the Constitution. If you're protecting Americans with a ban okay. on people who are extremists and who want to no, no, not extreme. I didn't say extremists. I said Muslims. If you want to put extremists with that word Muslim, I did it. No, I don't. I am asking a ban I, on all Muslims. I, no, not Muslim. No, Muslims. Trump said ban He's all got Muslims. Change his rhetoric. Okay. Well, he, you disagree Pence with Trump. Tried to help him change the rhetoric. So he was trying to try change the rhetoric. Trump, Trump hasn't changed. Day. Trump has not changed his ban on all Muslims. He has not. Well, then everyone should help him change it. He's trying to change it. I hear it. Okay. I, 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 maybe I'm not listening, but, but I appreciate it, Lisa. Lou in uh, beautiful Queens, New York. Lou, talk to me. Steve Adubato here. Steve, uh, you're a great journalist. We've talked before. Listen, first of all, Mr. Khan, outside of being a gold star guy, is hooked up to a law firm called Hogan Hearts, and now it's called Hogan Lovells. Isn't that interesting? It's the same law firm that represents Saudi Arabia. It's the same law, law, uh, law firm that represents Hillary Clinton and her tax foundation. It's the same law firm that uh, Loretta Lynch came from. So there's a very big connection there, and he specializes in the EB-5 green card, which for $500,000 you get a green card into the United States. What do you think about that connection? Mm, I can tell you what I think. I think that Mr. and Mrs. Khan lost a young son in Iran, and they are grieving Gold Star parents, and that's about it. To me, they've given the ultimate sacrifice along with their son. Uh, just, you know, for in the interest of being thorough, it was Iraq that he died in, not Iran. Uh, Iraq, Iraq was the war that uh, Hillary Clinton and George Bush supported. Iran is the country that uh, President Obama just gave $400 million to without yes. disclosing it to the American public in exchange for hostages. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible on the yeah. part of the And that's thing. the person that claims Donald Trump is unfit. Thank you, Mr. Morano. Uh, can we go to uh, Paramus, New Jersey? Or, no. No. Uh, we're going to Paramus, New Jersey for the yeah, news. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> Did, there's no I'll news right in there. Paramus, New Jersey? Oh, I'm sure there is. I'm well, sure tell us what's happening in Paramus. In, uh, per, A.M. Paramus. Let's go. Uh, Steve Adubato here. We're going to uh, go to another guy who knows art and culture and films. Uh, before we go to a ton of calls, Fred and Paramus and Vince and Charlie and Alan Brooklyn and Joy in Bronxville and Robert in New York City, I promise we'll get to you. And thank you for calling in to the greatest radio show on morning radio here in New York City in the uh, tri-state area. But right now, Stephen Woody, film critic, my favorite paper, The Star Ledger, and NJ.com, my favorite website. Uh, Stephen, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing terrific. Uh, Stephen, uh, Suicide Squad, I wanted to go down to the Jersey Shore where I am this weekend and try to go see it. Should I? Um, well, you know, a lot of that depends on how big a fan you are of, um, of the DC, you know, comic universe and those characters. It's an interesting, uh, you know, if, you, if you're not really up on it, it is a really wild idea for a movie. It's basically the Dirty Dozen done with comic book villains. <laughs> so, mm. you know, so we spring all of these, all of these characters from, uh, you know, from, from Gotham City's prisons, uh, and, um, and turn them loose in one of these, like, okay, you want to get some time off your, uh, uh, off your sentence. You have to catch this even worse villain who's, who's running around town. So it's a, it's a good idea, and there's some great performances in it. There also, you know, there's also a lot of noise and silliness. The plot doesn't make too much sense, and the right. whole thing ends in about 20 minutes of special effects that are going to give you a headache. So. Grabbing me. How about ba ba Bad Mom stars whom? Uh, Bad Moms has uh, Mila Kunis in it, uh, Catherine Hahn, who is terrific and really steals the show, and uh, Kristen Bell. And um, you know, I, I am sure it's going to resonate with a lot of uh, a lot of listeners. In that, you know, we're doing everything around the house. We're doing everything at school. We're also working. Um, let's just go out for margarita night and get really silly. And so I'm I'm all behind that. I just wish um, I just wish they they let the ladies get a little sillier and. Dirtier and raunchier than they than they do. You know, it's it sort of starts off like the Hangover, but then all of a sudden they're like worried about reforming the PTA. It's like, no, this is not what about uh, you know partying should be about. The guys in the Hangover were not suddenly worried about uh, you know uh, retarring the roof, uh, yeah. and they should let the ladies have the same the same uh, freedom to go wild. By the way, I'm a fan of. Is it Kristen Bell who is the one who was with Don Cheadle in the? 
guys, uh, the, the Don Ch- is not the Ocean's Eleven. No, no, the the Showtime series. Haven't seen House of Lies. House of Lies. Thank you very much. Yeah. she's the one. She's terrific. Uh, real quick, I know they've been out a little bit, but uh, you want to say anything about Star Trek or Ghostbusters? Um, I want to tell people to go see uh, to go see Star Trek Beyond. You know, I I had a great time. I'm a, I'm an old, uh, and I do mean old Trek fan. You know, back from back from the days of Captain Kirk and uh, and beam me up, Scotty. I'm I'm a fan of this the show and the series, and I really think they do a nice job. You know, they they do change things up, they do modernize things a bit. Uh, but I thought it was a real it was a real fun fun film and a fun ride. And you know, if if you're getting a little sick and tired of all these big special effects movies and raunchy comedies every summer i'll put in a plug for a little movie called indignation uh certainly speaks to us it's about a kid from newark uh Mm. going off to college and uh, and trying to deal with uh you know that culture clash it's based on a philip roth book it's only playing in new york theaters right now i think but uh it's really worth seeking out i tell you what the person i get advice from about movies is stephen witty film critic for the star ledger and nj.com check his stuff out by the way go on nj.com right now and read uh steven's stuff about films out today or these days and also past stuff past calm steven you're the best thanks buddy thank you <clears throat> uh let's go back to the very busy phones folks i'm going to ask you to get right to the point be clear the lines are jammed uh 877-970-2999 steve adubato here at mom i know you're trying to call in you're not going to get in I'm sorry. That's what happens when you guest host and it's you just you're too popular. People love me. People hate me. They don't hate me, but they just want to talk to me. Fred and Paramus, go. Hey, Steve. Good morning. Morning. Uh, Right to the point. I would like our Republican supporters and potential Trump supporters, Republican media, to try to focus on telling Trump how to beat the Democratic machine. The Democratic machine, you know, influenced Khan, started the controversy. Mm. They put up a, 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 a person like Hillary who's actually, I mean, it's black and white. She's a criminal. And she has done nothing for this country. And we have bad trade deals, right? I mean, you, you might be sick of hearing that, but the bottom line I'm not is sick of hearing it. You, have a, you have a majority of this country that's living paycheck to paycheck. One major episode, and they're broke or they're borrowing. So why can't Trump stay disciplined and talk about it? Well, because if any other Republican candidate was up right now, they'd be squashed like Romney was run over by a truck. Because really? the Democratic machine is so strong. So you don't think Trump? Th- you don't God. think Trump? You don't think Trump deserves any of the criticism for being all over the place and criticizing everyone other than Hillary well, Clinton? Well, I, I, I think that the attacks are so calculated, and the Democratic machine is so pop so strong that if we didn't have Trump in there, we'd be squashed. Right so why now. can't he be so more? So why do you think Republicans are abandoning? Well, I, I think those are the ones that uh, had had had, you know, extreme uh, dissatisfaction from the get go. Like Chris Christie. So, uh, I don't think Chris Christie. I think if you got Chris on the phone right now, he'd tell you he supports Trump. Oh, no, no, he is. I, I agree. But I'll tell you this. And, and I know and him I, well and I, he's not abandoning him. But I'll tell you what, when Chris Christie says he would never have said what Trump said about the cons. You've got to ask yourself what that means. And because Chris Christie's a loyal guy. He's a smart guy. He knows politics. He, he, he knew what he was saying. And I'll tell you what, that was a message to Trump. Just my view, Frank. Uh, thank, thank, appreciate it. Fred. Let's go to Vince in Bergen County. By the way, New Jersey's going to be represented. But I'm going to Long Island, Brooklyn, Bronxville, and New York City right after this. Go, Vince. Got 30 seconds or less. Steve, all of this righteous indignation over Trump and the Stephanopoulos interview is just a bunch of baloney. If people would just spend 20 minutes of their lives like I did last night and rewatch the interview on YouTube with Stephanopoulos without all of the left-wing media elites trying to program us and play gotcha. It was a perfectly reasonable interview. Listen to the interview. Okay. It was Donald Trump being Donald Trump, and without the, uh, the three-second little snippets taken out of context by the left-wing media all the time. Got it, Vince. Appreciate it, buddy. Charlie in beautiful Long Island, not to be uh, confused with the Jersey Shore. Go, Charlie. Uh, the Khan family was chosen uh, to exploit his tragedy with his son and also to his exploitation of actually being Muslim. My question is, is we're concentrating on this, but very little airtime is been given to the fact to uh, Julian Assad saying that he's got a bombshell to drop, that he's guaranteeing uh, – 
of indictment in prison time. So my question is, is what do you think that might be, and when do you think it will drop? Interesting. Assange? Jail time? Yeah. That it, well, I mean, that's what he's saying. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I, I don't have the inside information like that. Hmm. Uh, listen, Al in Brooklyn, Joy in Bronxville, Robert in beautiful New York City coming to you later. Right now, uh, Debbie Duhame and the traffic situation. Uh, listen, try to get to as many of these calls as possible. Go to Brooklyn. Al, Steve out about it. you got to be really tight to the point. Go. If Mr. Trump wants more of the black vote, he should hold all his press conferences in the worst cities of, of America. Baltimore, Camden, Trenton, really Cleveland. And he should get the black vote because look what the 50 years of them being in control has gotten us. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Uh, Bronxville, Joy, talk to me. Yes, hello. Yes, all right. Um, I want to say, first of all, we don't have any other choice but Trump uh, if we want to keep America as it is. Also, uh, please don't put down Paul Ryan. He is the only one who has the temperament to work with Trump. All right? Please. I, I didn't not. put him down. Frank put him down. Frank Morano put him down. I did, yes. Well, I can't believe you, Frank. I can't believe Frank did that because Paul Ryan is a wonderful human being. I agree. And, That's and Steve Adubato. I think he's a good man. And he can work with Trump. He knows how to deal with people. Uh, I agree. You know, and Trump is our only hope. Appreciate it. Uh, we don't have time for Robert. No, he's gone. He's out. Bye, That's Robert. It. We got no more. Listen, guys, um, let me tell you something. This was fun. Great Steve, job. Steve, you were on the DL and you came in anyway. That's, that's and on vacation. Bad. Right. But you know something? The idea of coming to work with you guys, with Frank and Alan, Debbie and the team here at AM 970, it would take more than a sore back and coming up from the Jersey Shore to stop me from being with you guys. But I will not be here tomorrow morning. That's correct. John, John Cassimatidis will be here with us. We're going to have some fun. That was my chance to plug. And Arthur Adela will be here for John at 11. And Joe will be back next week. And you are my radio, La Familia, my family. God bless you guys. And most importantly, thank you for everyone who listened today on AM 970, the best radio station uh, in the New York area, the best morning show around. Joe, take care. See you Monday. Opinion. Passion. This is AM 970. The answer.